Right now, you're watching Wave 3 News. We have an epidemic uh, in an outbreak of the HIV virus. An outbreak in Indiana with 72 new HIV positive cases and seven more suspected. Indiana Governor Mike Pence declaring a public health emergency in Scott County. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shannon Kogan. And I'm Scott Reynolds. Just this afternoon, state leaders met with local officials who have been on the ground fighting that outbreak. Wave 3 News reporter Janelle McDonald joining us now. And Janelle, what do they plan to do about it? Well, Governor Pence will make that executive order tomorrow morning, flooding Scott County with more tools and more resources to to stop the outbreak before it spreads further. To anyone in the sound of my voice who is involved in intravenous drug use, stop. Your life is at stake. 100% of the new cases, the governor says, are linked to IV drug use. The state's epidemiologist says Opana is the primary culprit here, although meth and heroin have a role too. And while the epidemic is centered in Scott County, the state's health commissioner, Dr. Jerome Adams, says it is a statewide problem. And if we don't get it solved down here in Scott County, it's going to spread to the surrounding counties. It's going to spread to the entire state. And we're going to see this throughout the state and the country. In fact, Dr. Adams says some of the newly diagnosed cases have sought treatment in Louisville, so Indiana is working with public health officials across the river as well. Governor Pence says that HIV testing and treatment can be covered under Indiana's new health coverage, the Healthy Indiana Plan. With his declaration tomorrow, specific resources, including a mobile command unit, will pour will include, but he does say he doesn't support needle exchanges as an anti-drug policy, but adds this is an emergency and he will listen to the will of local officials before making that final decision. Janelle McDonald, Wave 3 News. And thanks, Janelle. The anti-heroin bill signed into law here in Kentucky today does allow the controversial needle exchanges aimed at curbing HIV. Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir signed it today, saying there was not a minute to waste. Political reporter Theo Keith joining us live from the newsroom. And Theo, this was an emotional end to a very long debate. It sure was, Shannon. Lawmakers say now, because hundreds of Kentuckians are dying of heroin overdoses every year, they have to work quickly to spread the word about what the this new law offers. <laughs> Governor Steve Bashir says Kentucky's new heroin law sends a message to dealers. We're coming after you, we're going to put you out of business, and we're going to put you in jail. Speaking to addicts, Bashir says help is on the way. Help that comes too late for Charlotte Wethington's son. It is bittersweet. It is bittersweet that things weren't in place for us. Her son Casey died in 2002 of a heroin overdose at age 23, the beginning of the state's heroin crisis that continues to grow. Wethington brought a part of Casey with her from her home in northern Kentucky to the Capitol. This bill is a tribute to the lives that we've lost and their it's hope for the lives that we still have to save. The bill allows increased penalties for drug dealers, adds funding for treatment, provides immunity to people who call 911 during an overdose, and gives power to pharmacists to prescribe the overdose reversing drug naloxone. Those issues took months to debate, and lawmakers said they did it with people like Wethington in mind. They've lost people in their lives that cannot be replaced. I am so elated that finally people are listening. The sad part of it is we have lost so many lives in the interim. This heroin bill allows local governments to set up needle exchanges. They're controversial, as you just heard, so addicts can swap dirty needles for clean ones. That's the intent. Here in Louisville, there has been some preliminary talks about that, but I'm told Metro Council members were waiting to see what was in the final bill before they move forward. From the newsroom, Theo Keith, Way 3 News. Theo, thank you. Scott County, Indiana, the site of that HIV outbreak actually ranked as the unhealthiest county in Indiana, according to a newly released study from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Out of the 120 in Kentucky, Oldham ranked as second healthiest. Jefferson County is 34th. The study is based on 30 different factors, including education, housing, diet, and exercise. To see the rest of the rankings for both states, head over to wave3.com. An ambulance crew blames a wrong way driver, but a witness claims the ambulance ran a stoplight. The result, a wreck at First and Ali just after morning rush hour. The impact actually pushing a van into a wall 
at the Brown School downtown. Crews had to pry the doors open to pull out the driver and her teenage son. It was the ambulance patient's second wreck. New Chapel EMS was taking him to U of L Hospital from Charlestown. All three are expected to recover. The wreck coming only moments before the sidewalks would have been full of students at the Brown School on a fire drill. Every time we try to go across the street to get inside of the building, there is always cars flying through her. And I'm like, you know, I'll be thinking about these babies over her. Brown principal Tim Healy emailed the parents telling them no students were outside, none were in danger when that wreck occurred. But it reminds them that Brown has no green space between traffic and the building there. The pursuit of perfection continuing in Cleveland where the Kentucky Wildcats are getting ready to play West Virginia in the Sweet 16. They tip off tomorrow night, but way through sports director Kent Taylor spoke to both coaches in Cleveland today. And Kent, these two really have quite a past. Yes, Shannon, they do. They're, they're two heavyweights of the coaching profession combined. They've won around 1,400 games, taking teams to seven Final Fours and, of course, John Calipari's national championship with Kentucky in 2012. John Calipari in Kentucky against Bob Huggins and West Virginia. And, of course, they have history in that they've also played 10 times as head coaches. And surprisingly, Bob Huggins has won eight of those 10 meetings. He and I used to be the young coaches. We were the young guys. And we turn around and now we're the old guys. I don't understand that, what happened, but that's what happened. Um, and I've always respected what he does coaching his basketball teams, how hard they play, how physical they play, um, how they rebound. There's, there's almost like things that you'll see and you'll say that's his team. You know, somebody asked me what separates Cal from other coaches, I, and, and, and Cal and I have gone to Europe together and, and done a bunch of things. I said, well, most most other basketball coaches aren't uh, get on a plane and read uh, U.S. News and World Report or uh, Money Magazine or, you know, those kind of things. And Cal's, Cal is a, a very diverse guy. So that's the key. Start reading Money Magazine. Of course, Calipari also has really good players. He had five NBA first-round draft picks on his team in 2010, and Huggins in West Virginia beat the Cats. You remember that back in 2010 in Syracuse. But the Cats' heavy favorites here as they try to get to 37-0 and continue their pursuit of perfection. Tip-off around 10 o'clock, maybe just a little before, here at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland on Thursday night. Guys? Yeah, and Kent, you might want to share Money Magazine with the players because six or seven are going to be making a lot of money next year in the NBA. Yeah, they're going to need it. You're right. Yeah. All right. Ken Taylor live in Cleveland. Don't forget, our Kendrick Haskins is in Syracuse with the cards. His report starting tonight at 11. You can tweet us your cards and cats photos all tournament long with the hashtags. Wave three cards and wave three cats. So pretty simple to do just that. Yeah, and I bet a lot of coaches will start reading Money Magazine just thinking if that is what's working for him, they're going to try it. Well, if you did not get outside today, just run outside right now. Do something on the grill because it is just beautiful out there. Yeah, and your hours are numbered right now. Yeah. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Harnett <laughs> live in the backyard. And Kevin, you're telling us the warm weather. Well, the clock is ticking. Yeah, and that's why during uh, every time I'm not in the studio, I'm out here like, oh, man, what a day. When will we see this weather last more than just a couple of days in a row? Uh, it's going to be a while. In fact, we're going back into the deep freeze. Temperatures in the 20s by the weekend. Ah, here's our view from the Kentucky One SkyTrack camera. It sets atop the Sheridan. You can see the new bridge making progress in the distance there. Uh, of course, that's the Kennedy Bridge in the foreground and bright blue sky across the area. Let me show you the temperatures from around the region. You'll note that we are in the mid 70s now at 75 degrees, 60s off to our north as far as cloud cover is concerned, not a lot of it around here yet. That will be changing, as you can see on a wider view, showers and thunderstorms, even a couple of tornado warnings back out to our west in parts of Oklahoma, northern Arkansas. While I don't think we have a whole lot to worry about when it comes to severe weather, we will see some gusty winds and we will see thunderstorms increasing, but not until after midnight. And that means a pretty nice evening despite the gusty winds. Temperatures falling through the 50s and going down or falling through the 60s, I should say, going into the 50s overnight tonight, 40s by tomorrow. Had a chance to post on Facebook just a few minutes ago. How are folks enjoying the nice evening? David and Sarah said they're going for a nice family walk, and Eric said he mowed the lawn for the first time today. 
I'm good with just what? standing out here. <laughs> Wow, mowing the lawn. I haven't even thought about that yet. How much How fertilizer <laughs> did he put on this winter? Yeah. Oh, my That's goodness. That's a good question. One of right. those neighbors. Yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> Indiana schools getting the green light to charge your kids for riding the big yellow bus. You're watching Way 3 News at 6, always streaming live on Way3.com, where you can find out where Kentucky and UofL fans stand on the list of basketball's rowdiest crowds. Listen to this. You might have to put down some cash to get your children on a bus to school in Indiana. A Supreme Court ruling there saying public schools are not required to provide students transportation to and from school. The ruling stemming from a case with the Franklin Township Community School Corporation. That was back in 2011. The district was strapped for cash, so it hired a private company that actually charged parents for transportation. The court ruled that was okay because it did not violate any state laws. New tonight at 11. It was an accident that made many think of how fragile life is. The victim, just 24 years old, walking to her downtown office. That's when a concrete truck hit and killed Ryan Tua while turning from Maine onto 2nd Street. This happened last June. Then six months later, another fatal accident in downtown Louisville when another concrete truck from the same company, according to police reports, Advanced Ready Mix Concrete, was turning onto Broadway. I sat down with the parents of Ryan Toole who say there should be accountability for these accidents. I mean, if we don't pursue this, nobody is. We're her voice at this point. We invite you to join us tonight at 11. More of my interview with Ryan's parents. What they think should have happened to the driver involved in their daughter's accident and also how common these types of accidents are. Well, he finished his degree, but died in a crash before he could walk across the stage. One year later, one U of L student's loved ones are finally getting his diploma. And a live look outside. What a beautiful evening it is in Kentuckiana. Kevin Harnett will join us next to tell us things are changing. Graduating from college is such a huge milestone, but for one U of L student that day, would never come. Carrie Benson was killed in a car wreck one year ago, just a couple months shy of graduation day. But as Wave 3 News reporter Katie Bowers reports tonight, his hard work won't be forgotten. But it's hard. I'm used to him just standing right here beside me. And um, just a few months before his, his death, he was here standing with me um, when my dad passed away. So it's tough. It's not the 26th birthday Kelly Benson ever pictured for her son, but what he accomplished in his short life. I'm proud of him. Good job. <laughs> left a mark on so many. Yeah. A standout basketball player at PRP High and walk on at UK, Carrie Benson finished his studies at UofL, his sights set on getting his master's. He's definitely missed. Last March, Benson was driving two of his friends when he lost control on an icy road. Only one person survived. My life has been different. It's, it'll never be the same. It changed at that very moment. Time stood still for sister Carmen. Carrie was always the motivator to his three siblings. He just, he kept pushing and he really believed in education and education was the key to a successful and happy life. Hoping to someday become a physical therapist, this mother dreamed of her son's college graduation, but she never got to see him walk in cap and gown. On Christmas Day, his best friend, Nick George, came to my house with a letter from U of L informing me that they were going to honor him with a graduation ceremony um, and present his diploma. I can't believe it. It's amazing. In the presence of family and friends on his birthday, Carrie Benson's University of Louisville Bachelor of Science degree was presented to his family. So congratulations to Thank you, you. Thank um, you. commendations on his amazing accomplishments. I just keep thinking about my graduation day and how excited he was and yeah, it's, he would have been smiling right now. <laughs> Another memory of a son, brother and friend that will never be forgotten. He's gone. He's been gone a year, but he's still doing things. <laughs>
And as you saw, Louisville U of L helped make this day extra special for the family. You noticed that the diploma was already framed. That was the first thing that Carrie's mother wanted to do. She said she will proudly hang it in her home. Live from U of L, Katie Bauer, Wave 3 News. All right, thanks for that story, Katie. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Harned promised that this would be the pick of the week, really, a gorgeous day. Yes, I, hopefully you got outside a little bit today. Not enough. <laughs> so <laughs> nice out there. I took a great walk with the dog, Kevin. It was really beautiful. I saw, did I see a sunrise shot from you today? Yes. Uh, it was beautiful, Wasn't Shannon. that nice? Yeah, it was. Uh, you were out early, and in fact, we kept a decent amount of sunshine through the day. Starting to see a few clouds move in from our Kentucky One SkyTrack camera. This is situated atop Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. We look over to Churchill Downs in the distance, uh, and then this is Jim Patterson Field. A perfect day for baseball today. Yeah, it's a little windy out there. What we'll look forward to will be these temperatures. Now, they're going to be going down after the gusty winds of today, which peaked out at about 33 miles per hour, I should say. Those temperatures over the next 12 hours go from the mid 70s through the 60s into the 50s. And yeah, they're going to keep going down the 40s in store for us as we look ahead to this time tomorrow. So get ready for a big cool down. 75 right now in Louisville. Those winds out of the west at 9. We hit 76 today. When you think about where we should be this time of year, 61 would be the actual average high, and we were well above that. We'll take it. Looking around the region, we have 60s and a few 50s to our north, low to mid 70s to our south. Here's the deal. We're going to see clouds on the increase tonight, and that's going to bring with it a chance for rain. Even a few thunderstorms be the first storms we've had of the spring season. In fact, if we go all the way back to January, <laughs> so when we last heard a rumble of thunder, saw some lightning. Areas back out to our west are seeing severe weather, even a few severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings. Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas. I don't think we have to worry about that. It's not going to be that intense, but we will have a few storms that approach us with some gusty winds late tonight, early tomorrow morning. The timing on this for us here in Louisville, probably after 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you can see that cluster of storms back out to our west at 4.30 starting to grow gradually push our way through the morning rush hour. Yep, you might need the wipers early tomorrow. Temperatures are going to be going down through the 40s and we'll file uh, keep falling actually through the 40s and into the 30s by tomorrow night. How much rain? Well, the computer models point out anywhere between about a half inch up to close to an inch. I think it depends on where you are. Parts of southern Indiana going to get a little more rain here in Louisville and on to our south just a little less. So I'd say about a half inch of rain for us and close to an inch in southern Indiana. Cleveland, Ohio Ohio with the cats, snow in the forecast there Friday into Saturday. And look at those temperatures. Highs only in the low 30s, even colder in Syracuse, New York. Uh, Friday, snow chance 32, still a chance for some snow. High of 26 on Saturday. Whew. Bundle up if you're headed north. 50s for our evening and overnight tonight. Well, I should say 60s for the evening. Overnight will drop into the 50s. And then as we look ahead to the day tomorrow, temperatures fall back into the 40s. And uh, not the best looking forecast as we go into the weekend mm. because it's cold. Uh -huh. We have lows in the mid 20s despite the fact the sunshine comes back, and we're going to warm back up. Upper 60s, low 70s by early to mid next week. Oh, what a treat today was. Yeah, yeah. it really was. Yeah, nice. Thanks. All right. You, you can see the suntan he got just in the I backyard. Know, right? short <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still top, to top come. My head too. Ken Taylor, not getting a suntan in Cleveland, I don't think. He's joining us next, talking cats, cards, and knights. Back here live in Cleveland, Ohio, downtown, right outside of Quicken Loans Arena, where on Thursday night around 945, Kentucky, the top seed in the Midwest region, will meet West Virginia, the number five seed, with a spot in the Elite Eight on the line. Now, the Cats had an open practice inside Quicken Loans Arena this afternoon, and we also had a chance to talk to them, especially about what some of the West Virginia players have been saying. Daxter Miles Jr. says that Kentucky's 36-0 start is impressive, but that after after the game tomorrow night, they'll be 36 and 1 because they won't be able to handle the Mountaineers' pressure. They do force 20 turnovers a game. Because you won't, by pressuring us, you're going to bring out the best of us. By letting us relax and kind of do things, then it's going to bring out like a relaxed mentality. But like we got so many competitive dudes that if you got guys coming at us, like you're not, we're not just going to like let you come at us. Like this. If that was the case, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be like who we are today. Well, stakes always been for us. I mean, every game we step onto is the other team's Super Bowl. So uh, you know, we just always step up and we always know. It's 
a big stakes game. But uh, Sweet 16, you know, it's just just telling us to stay mentally sharp, just stay focused. You know, I think we all have an idea now of what how big this uh, tournament really is, especially as freshmen. So uh, just taking it step by step. Now, when I, while I'm in Cleveland with the Cats, our Kendrick Haskins has arrived in Syracuse, New York, covering the U of L men who will play on Friday night against NC State, and the U of L women who will face, uh, who will play against Dayton in Albany on Saturday afternoon. He'll be at both games. So you know we're we're in a good place right now. Uh, we're not satisfied by no means. We understand that. You know, you get to the Sweet 16, like I've told our kids, you know, when I first took the job here, if you can get to the Sweet 16, anything can happen. Jeff Wells has gotten the cards to the two national championship games, so don't bet against him. Now, the Bellarmine Knights in action tonight in the Elite Eight Division II style are Brian Winters in Evansville. It's been four years since the Knights won the national title back in 2011. The only person still a part of this team from that title run is head coach Scotty Davenport. But rest assured, every player on this current roster wants the feeling of winning a national title. And now Bellarmine is only three games away from making that dream come true. I mean, I, I remember watching it on TV and I was like, man, I want to do that. And I was, I was hoping Bellarmine was going to offer me and they finally did. And it's, it's, it's going to be a great feeling. And uh, bringing it back to this community would be the, the biggest feeling and uh, the greatest feeling I probably ever had. And I said that at, at, earlier in the year, I, I believed in us and I know Coach believed in us as well. I came here because I knew we was going to be contending to win the national championship and the, and the time is now. It's something you dream about as a kid, playing in a national championship game on TV. I mean, it couldn't get any better than that. And, you know, for this community who supports us so much, you know, I, I think they deserve to celebrate with us as much as we get to celebrate it. The tip time tonight for the Elite Eight is 9.30, and we'll bring you all the highlights later on at 11. From the Ford Center here in Evansville, Brian Winter, Way Through Sports. Thanks, Brian. Also, more live from Cleveland tonight at 11. Guys? All right, thanks so much, Kenton. He said getting colder there. I guess they're getting it before we're getting it. Uh, well, yeah, they're going to be in the 20s there by the <laughs> weekend. <laughs> we're enjoying the 70s. NBC Nightly News is next. See you at 7. Now with Wave3.com and the Wave3 News mobile app, you always have breaking news and breaking weather right where you are. Brought to you by the Kentucky Lottery. Fueling imagination, funding education.